And through our office, at this point, we were up to about 30 employees. Everybody was proud to work there. And we also saw, we see each other in the hall. We're number one. We're the number one company in the valley, and we're going to make a difference. And all through the years, every time my employees would see me, they'd all hold up their finger and go, number one. When we'd pass in the hallway, we'd go, number one. Number one. We were excited about what we were doing. Three years later, we were still doing this, but I noticed when my employees came to me, they changed fingers on me. <laughs> then, I got to tell you, we went public. And all of a sudden now, we have $38 million in the bank. God, I never thought I could even think of that kind of money. All our problems were behind us. Now all we had to do was execute. I had so much pressure from this money, and it made such a difference in my life. Not personally, I didn't go out and buy things, but I could pay people's payroll. I remember what I did. You know how when you call like Bank of America or your bank and you find out what is your balance, and it goes, your balance is $342.75. Well, prior to the CFO shipping the money to a money market account, he kept it in a checking account. So I called, and it said, your balance is $38,375,049. So I recorded that on the Listen Up Player. And I used to go around from booth to booth say, we'll never be poor again. <laughs> we'll never be poor again. And I could see the vision of broadband, even back in 1994. Back then, it was the cable companies that had the control. We were all watching. If you were using a computer, you were using 36K modems, and they were very, very slow. And the cable companies had, it, had all the bandwidth right there. So we first thought we were going to develop this MP3 player using the cable companies, because they had everything in place. And I had this vision of high speed running content to the computer, then from the computer to a portable device. And I'm going to show you the first MP3 player today. We're going to play with it a little bit. So I thought, how do I accomplish this? I'm a visionary, and I've always been a CEO. I'm really not very much of a technical person, which surprises people. But I went out and I hired myself a PhD from Stanford University, who happened to be a rocket scientist named Jim Janke. And, I said, and Jim was my first employee. I said, Jim, how do we? create this. Can this be done? I told him my concept, told him my idea. He liked it. He came back and said, here's how we do it. Then we hired a team of five or six people. And when I used to walk around, I used to say, I used to tell people about my vision. And I used to say, it's really not that difficult. It's not rocket science. But if it is, we have a rocket scientist. <laughs> uh, Apple was really one of the last companies to bring out the MP3 player. It's a very good question. One of the first ones was Rio. And we were busy suing people back in those days. Uh, Apple was the first one that did it right. They did it in 2000, 2001. And what they did right was bring out the whole back end. They have a full plug and play system. Uh, back when Rio and the smaller companies were doing it, you had to go out and find your content on illegal ways or things like Napster. Apple was the first company that had the full structure out there. I actually just finished a consulting gig for Apple, SanDisk, and LG uh, on, a, on a lawsuit that they were facing. The, the, uh, Apple really, really did this right, and they made the MP3 player what it was today. Up till they brought it out, it really wasn't nearly as popular as it is today. The sun puts enough energy on our planet every day to run our planet for a full year. We just have to learn how to harvest it better. And we are doing that every, every day.